your life will be rooted out in Jesus' name. Miracle is coming your way. What are you? Salvation today. Healing today. Deliverance today. And power in every one of our lives. And for all our brethren and all people joining us online, get ready. Something will happen that never happened. Wonders of the cross in every life, even from this moment, in Jesus' name, the eyes will open. The ears will open. And those who have been destroyed by the enemy, enemy of your life, enemy of your soul, today, the Lord is going to bring you up in Jesus' name. Father, we well, thank you tonight. We well, bless your name. We well, thank you for Christ. He was born. He lived a sinless life. He went to the cross of Calvary for every one of us. And I pray, Lord, Lord, those wonders coming from the cross of Christ will be for everyone, even here tonight. Jesus' name, as you are touching us here, transforming us here, we pray that all over the world, for everyone connected, you connect them with your power. And we'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. Perform your word in every life. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, as we begin talking about Christ, a Savior, a healer, a redeemer, a deliverer, the all in all for us, we're going to start with the words of Jesus himself. And it's in John chapter 3, reading from verse 14. Here is Jesus talking to you. And you want to clear every hurdle between you and Christ. And you look at yourself that everything that Jesus said, the power that he manifested when he was here on earth, he'll manifest in your life. I didn't hear your amen. We're looking at John chapter 3, verse 14. He said, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And then he tells us in verse 15 that whosoever, whosoever here, there, anywhere, everywhere, whosoever believes in him, that means believes in him and keeps on believing in him, should not perish. I will not perish. You'll not perish in Jesus' name. But remember, those who will not perish are the people that believe in him. And they put their faith and their trust and their confidence in Christ, only in Christ, as their Savior. If you've not, you are going to do it tonight. And then the promise of God and the power of the Lord will be manifested in your life. It said that so ever believers do not perish but have eternal life and then he gives us the verse in verse 16 the verse everybody should know the verse everybody should embrace the verse everybody should accept and the verse everybody is that is mine he said for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, that's the word again, that whosoever is telling you tonight, he loves everyone, no respecter of persons. You are coming from the east or from the south. You are coming from the west or from the north. You are coming from here, Africa, or you are coming from America, anywhere. It says that whosoever believeth in him, in him, in him, you single him out. 
is a it's the only savior it's the only redeemer it's not christ and my religion christ and my tradition christ and my idols christ and my philosopher christ and my psychiatrist christ and any other person christ and christ alone that whosoever believes should not perish but everlasting life are you ready for that everlasting life abundant life real salvation in the lord and the life of christ in man the life of god in man the life that only christ can provide and he came from heaven he came to this world. provide that for you i congratulate you tonight that you are there and you fit in your name and your identity to that whosoever and that whosoever will become meaningful in your life as you turn away from everything of the past and you turn to the christ the savior that is being presented to you and you say he's mine is mine i embrace him i believe him i accept him and i have my faith and my confidence in him salvation has come tonight healing has come tonight deliverance has come tonight i'm talking to you today on total healing for everyone through his cross for everyone Everyone there without exception. Everyone there without any partiality. Whatever you are going through, whatever problem you have, whatever challenge you have, you are that one is coming to tonight. You are part of that everyone. Praise the Lord. Blessing is coming from heaven upon your life. Total healing, healing for your spirit, healing for your soul, healing for your wounds. Healing for you physically, healing, redemption, total redemption, and total recovery for everyone through his cross. Now you see Christ referred to a particular story. And that story said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so Christ, the Son of God, the Son of Man, the one that became, he came from heaven to earth. Son of God. And so that sons of men will become the sons of God. A transformation takes place in your life because he came. And because you accept. And because you embrace and believe what he did when he came. And so he came down that he might identify with you and then take your sin. That's a great exchange here. It takes your sin that he might give you his own. And then your status, your stage, your identity, everything is changed, even in the sight of Almighty God in heaven. Somebody give me a good amen total healing for you total healing for him total healing for her for everyone through his cross but then i want to divide that story into three parts number one corruption consequence habitual secret sin you see the children of Israel, they came large bondage. They've been there for centuries. They have been there. Came. It so happened that their corruption is and then the consequence of that corruption. And then eventually they came and they confessed before the Lord. You know, if you are going to have this healing, heaven sent healing, healing from the cross, it begins with confession. 
You know, your doctor cannot do much until you say, here is my problem. Here is my challenge. Here is why I'm having what I'm having. If you keep quiet, I say, I'm all right. When you are not all right, I feel good. When you're feeling the pain, I'm okay. When you are not okay, the doctor will not be able to do anything. But when you come, here is my challenge. Here is my problem. There's that corruption of the sequence of that corruption. Then you go to the next step. Healing will come. Salvation will come. Deliverance will come. A change, a mighty change. A transformation will come in your life. It's coming today. Number two is the compassion and the kill from the cross of the healing Savior. Yes, a Savior. Jesus is Savior. But he's also the healer. And as we bring those two words together, is the healing Savior. And he provided that and procured that for you on the cross of Calvary. Because of his compassion, not your marriage, not what you have done, but your tears forever flow. And you still no respite, no. All these for sin cannot atone. He, the Savior, and he alone must save. And when you come and you say nothing in my hands, I bring, I cling. When you organize yourself, yourself and you understand no matter who you are no matter what you have done all that cannot bring salvation to you or forgiveness to you or redemption to you when you realize no matter how good supposedly you are how religiously you are how religious supposedly you are how self-righteous Supposedly you are. When you push all that aside and you say simply to his cross, forgiveness will come. Compassion will come. A new life will come to you. A will have compassion. Point number two. Compassion and cure from Christ from the cross of the healing Savior. And then number three now. Conversion. When you're weak and you become strong, conversion. When you are guilty and then you are free from guilt, that's conversion. When you are powerless and you become powerful, that's conversion. When you are in the dark, in darkness, and then the Lord transforms your life and you come to the light, that's conversion. When you are going on the wrong road, that will lead you to eternal perdition. And you turn around, and the grace of God lifts you up. And then you come to the right road, the road that leads to life eternal. That's conversion when you are a sinner, and now the Lord turns you around and changes your life, and you become a sick soul, a righteous soul, and it starts from within. That's conversion. The cross of Christ our humiliated substitute. Him, our substitute, and he suffered as if he was the one that committed your sin. And he takes you away, and then he makes a great exchange, and he gives you his righteousness. His conversion is coming your way today. I said, It's coming your way today. Have it in Jesus' name. Now I'm going to the story. The story you'll find in Numbers chapter 21. Point number one now is the corruption, the consequence, and the confession of habitual secret sin. Numbers chapter 21, verse 4. If you don't have the Bible there, that's all right. I'll read the story to you. It says in verse 4, And the journey from Mount Or by the way of the Red Sea, to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much 
discouraged because of the way. It just saying that as we're moving on in their journey, discouragement came to them. Discouragement comes to everybody. And discouragement is not a sin, but what you do as a result of the discouragement, what you say as a result of the discouragement, how you act as a result of the discouragement. And the, you know, there are people that do some weird things. Some even go to the point of taking their lives. And they kill themselves by discouragement. It is what you do with that discouragement that tells whether you'll be on the right hand side of God or on the left hand side. And it says, and the people speak against God. It says, and the people. How is that? How could everybody begin against God? I want you to understand, picture yourself as if you're holding a candle. And the person by your side holding a candle. And they are everybody holding a candle. And lights the candle. Only one person. And then the next one by his side lights his candle from his candle. Another one lights the candle from that and from that candle. Before you know what, everybody has light in their candle. It's like that it's contagious you have it you speak out what's of discouragement what's of criticism and what's of despair and what's of fear what does the future hold another one will hear and imbibe and get and receive and respond and react with that discouragement and it goes on and on and on were copycats. What we see other people doing, they lie or lie. They're discouraged, they pass it on, we're discouraged. They criticize, we're criticized. They find, and as copycats, everybody now begins to do everything. That's why the Bible says, all have seen and come short of the glory of God. All those millions of people, Thousands of people, when people pick it up and discourage, what is it? What about this? What about that? And then uh, every other person. And it says, and the people speak against God and against Moses. They spoke against God. They broke the commandments of God. And then they spoke against Moses, a man, and they broke the commandments of man. You know, everything you do is classified into two parts. One side is God, the other side is man. Moses, man, humanity. That's why the commandments of God are divided into two. For relating directly with God. And everybody, without exception, has broken the commandments relating with God because it says all have sinned and come God. If you look at the commandments, not loved God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. You have not surrendered and submitted to God as so creator the way he wants. You have not thought about God in everything you do like he wants you to do. We have sinned against God like they did and the people against God. And the second part, they spoke against Moses. How many of us have not spoken against Father against our mother, teachers spoken against a principal at school, spoken against the prefect, and spoken against the leaders in communities, and spoken against everyone. We are the angels and the other people, they are the devil. And we say, why is this? If we're careless and we fail our exam, it's the fault of so and so. If we're careless and we fall sick, it's the fault of so and so. If we're careless, 
in the market, it's the fault of so and so. We speak against God, we speak against man now, against our Creator. When we live against a Creator, when we sin against a Creator, it has consequences. We speak against man, when we man when you sin against your neighbor it has consequence it says this word is said they said we have for have you brought us up out of egypt every out of egypt there have been slavery all those many years hundreds of years and they rejoice and they even sang but you know we are creatures of forgetfulness. We always forget what God did. He did for me last week. I'm only thinking of He had fed them all through that time until they came to that point. But now they have forgotten everything. Are you not forgetful? Do you always thank God? He created you, He gave you life, He gave you health. He gave you sustainers. He'll be taking care of you since you are born. Even to be born into this world, yet you don't deserve that. But God and every good thing he has done, we have forgotten. They forgot. And then they began to say, why? Have you brought us up out of the land of Egypt to die in God? He, was, he said was promise. It was taking them to the land of Canaan, but because of discouragement, they forgot who we are. That's who you are. You're ungrateful. And because of that ingratitude, we talk like this, we talk like that, we forget ourselves. We are temporarily mad. When you say temporarily, we even get angry against God and get angry against your man. And then they say, in this way, would you remember? That's humanity against everybody it's like nobody has done anything good for me and then it said neither is there any water neither is there any water this chapter 21 of numbers the lord are giving them water to drink out of the rock then then they said there's no water our soul low said this light spread he said it was but light bread. What I'm saying is from the story of these children of Israel, their corruption was out. Their corruption, everything, their corruption sold them out. But as you point one finger to them, the other fingers are pointing back to you. Why well, just like that, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You have sinned and you come short of the glory of God. What is the consequence of that? Look at verse 6. We are told in verse 6, and the Lord very serpents among the people. Why? Well, because there is sowing and reaping. What you sow is what you reap. And there is the consequence of our action. That's the judgment of God. The judgment of God came upon them. Would you know all those serpents were there in the wilderness before that time, but because they were walking in, in couldn't bite them, couldn't do anything to them. But once the cover and once the protection of the Lord left them, then the serpents came up, were safe almost out of nowhere. And much people of Israel died. Was that the will of God? No. There are people, any bad thing that happens, I'm sick, that's the will of God. I'm dying, that's the will of God. I'm penniless, that's the will of God. 
I'm poor, that's the will of God, and I have incurable disease, that's the will of God. I live a licentious life, therefore I have HIV AIDS, that's the will of God. It's not the will of God. We are the people that have caused all those things. And the earlier we confess, the better. And as you confess today, and you forsake and your sin, must say welcome to you. Confess today. I'm talking about somebody there. What are you? Mercy is coming. Forgiveness. Coming. Total healing will come to you in it's Jesus' coming. name. But you know, we must recognize that that we people I he is faithful and just to forgive us and to place us from all our righteousness. Give me a good amen to that. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but he who forsakes, confesses, and forsakes will have mercy. Looks like mercy is coming. Looks like compassion is coming your way. Coming around, it's coming your way. When you come to the Lord and you confess and you forsake and you say, I have done what I shouldn't have done. I have said what I shouldn't have said. I've gone the direction I shouldn't have gone. I return and I come to the Lord. The mercy of God and the compassion of the Lord and the salvation of God will come upon your life even tonight in Jesus name and look at the next verse now we're told in verse 7 it says in verse 7 therefore the people came to Moses there was no compulsion nobody tied any ropes on their feet and pulled them and said come they realized our problem started when we walked against God, spoke against God, acted against God, sinned against God. And if we're going to have the mercy of God and the compassion of the Lord, then we have to turn around. And they turned around. You are turning around tonight. From your heart, the depth of your heart, you're saying, Oh God, here am I. I want your mercy. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned. Look at that. They did start with uh, serpents are biting us. We're dying. That one has died. That one has died. Moses, don't let us die. You know, there are people that start with, kill me, kill me, kill me. I'm having this tumor, kill me. I'm having this blindness, kill me. I'm having this challenge, kill me. They didn't start with that. They started the right way. What brought this on us? What fruit and what seed did we plant and we're reaping this evil thing? They, they said, we have they didn't confess the sins of other people. Uh, it's Moses. Moses did not do this in time. That's why we did that. The government did not do this in time. That's why we acted that way. My daddy, my mommy did not do this for me. That's why I acted this way. My wife, uh, you know, did this. That's why I went to commit adultery. My husband did this. And then to retaliate and teach him a lesson that 
people. That's why I want to do that. They didn't confess other people's sins. I said we. They didn't confess tonight, and you're not confessing the sin of the church of your denomination, the church, the sin of your denomination, of your tribe, the sin of the Pharisees, and the sins of those, uh, you know, professional religious people, leave all that alone. He came and he said, we have sin. And the sin they committed, but we came against the Lord, and against thee, after that day unto the Lord, that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses preached for the people. That's why Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man, the Son of God, our Messiah, our Christ, the one who came to die for us, he said, even, he said even so, must he be lifted up on the cross of Calvary so that whosoever believes is your day. I, I said today is your life. day. If you will come like they came, if you will confess like they confess, if you will turn like they turn, if you will repent like they repented, and you ask for the mercy of God, that mercy will come to you tonight. I come now to point number two. Point number two says compassion and cure. Compassion and cure. Join those two things together. Cure comes because of compassion because of the love of God, because he is not willing that any of us, like any of them, should perish, but that everyone should repent, should turn, and come to life eternal. I'm sure you remember the life and the story of a whole city. Whole city is called Inebe. All of them had gone their own way from the top to from the greatest to the least of them. They had gone their own way. And the Lord said, Jonah to them, you know the story. The Lord then brought him back. And then he came eventually and said, In 40 days, Nineveh shall be overthrown. Now, Jonah did not understand the compassion and the love of God. He thought, once God the soul that sinneth, it shall die. And because of that, they will die. And because their cup of iniquity was already full, and because their sin had God brought them to the point of and because that destruction had been determined from heaven. Because of that, Jonah thought that the age had come for Nineveh. And so triumphantly, he went to declare, he went to announce that the end had come for them. And so he went every day and he told them, 40 days, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. Jonah failed to understand. Jonah failed to accept. Jonah failed to realize. Jonah failed. He didn't have the revelation that God will have mercy upon the people that turn. That the moment he had said 40 days, he was waiting without compassion, without mercy, without the love of God, and without the possibility of any repentance and any recovery. He was waiting, they will soon die. But, but, but 
the mercy came from heaven and all the people from the most sinful unto those who are just touching the sinful life like it will happen tonight I said like it will happen tonight as you turn like they turn and you're not saying I'm a great man I'm a highly placed man I'm a popular woman I'm a religious person even though you know that you are sinned against God and against man and your marriage eternal destruction if you are not sitting in your pride and you say Lord I come I'm the guilty one I'm asking for asking for compassion I trust not in I trust in the mercy and compassion and the love of God. Like those people in Nineveh, like they repented, like God had mercy on them, He will have mercy on you. That's the person I'm talking about there. Mercy. Let me shout mercy. Let me shout forgiveness. Let me shout compassion. It's coming your way, Jesus. And so they came and they told Moses and they said, We're saved. We want to be forgiven. They also wanted healing. They wanted all the bites and all the poison of those snakes. God is able. Able to heal. I can't hear your amen. Able to deliver. Able to set free. Able to turn your life around. And tonight, say tonight is my night. Tonight is the night of my mercy. Tonight is the night of compassion. Tonight is the night of salvation. Say, say it. Tonight is the night of forgiveness. Tonight it will happen to you. Life will never be the same again. Then they were so healed. God did something. He told Moses to do something. Here is it, look at this, and God said unto Moses, Make thee a fairy serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass. That means it will happen. Salvation will happen. Healing, it will happen. Deliverance, it will happen. Total renewal, it will happen. Pass that everyone that is beating, remember, all those who have sinned, they were beating. That's the consequence of sin. That's why they came. And that's why God had compassion on them. And it says, everyone. That is beating when he looketh upon it shall live. And that those children of Israel and were beaten by those snakes and were dying as a result of their sin, not the fault of Moses, not the fault of Aaron, not the fault of God, their own fault because of their sin and because. But everyone at the look up at the lifted of serpent as God had directed. Everyone, they were not looking at their pain, they were looking at the brazen serpent lifted up. And they were not asking their neighbor to look on their behalf. Everyone, wherever they were. They spread out 
in their millions. There were many. And yet, from anywhere, they looked upon the serpent of brass as they looked. Moses didn't have to go and touch them one by one. He didn't have to go and shake them or put anything on them. Just looking. And as they looked, they were Just made whole. Looking. Your own time and has come. They looked, I said, your own time has come. I remember Jesus said, said with this story, as Moses, Moses lifted up with the serpent in the wilderness, as Moses he lifted up so, the serpent, son of man, the Lord the Jesus Christ, will be lifted up, so, the son of man, Christ, will be lifted up on the cross. And everyone that looks believingly, everyone that looks at Everyone that says that he did for me, that brazen serpent lifted up upon the pole was for me. Everyone without exception that believed and looked up to that brazen serpent was healed. And that is what the Lord is going to do today. Christ has been lifted up. He died on the cross. And you remember what he said on the cross? He became our substitute. He became our healer. By we are healed. And so as you look up to the Lord and you say, He is my Savior. He forgives all sins and He heals all diseases. And He will save yesterday and today and forever. What He did for all the people in tonight he will do for you and it does not matter how old you are how young you are it does not matter the serpent had beaten the children of israel anywhere they were all they needed to do was to look the direction of that prison serpent her healing her deliverance will come on them and tonight to the revenge. Tonight that salvation is going to come to you. Tonight that healing is going to come to you. They didn't have to shout, they didn't have to do anything already. The serpent was lifted up and themselves. The power of the Lord will be connected to them by themselves because they did what the Heavenly Father told them to do. Look on that lifted bracing serpent and then all your problems are over. And Jesus made allusion to that when it was done at that time now that he had died for us that he had borne our pain they are taking our guilt as we look up to Jesus Christ. Look unto me, all ye the ends of the earth, and be ye saved. He will save you. I said, He will save you. That's why the psalmist said, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless His holy name. Then he said, All thy transgressions. That's what he's going to do tonight. I say that's what he's going to do tonight. He will do it for you. Everyone that has been convicted of their sin, and you know, upon us, upon everyone without exception, and you confess for the willingness to forsake, and then you look up to Christ, the one who of Calvary, immediately forgiveness, Salvation will come to you. Can I hear a greater amen? And then they did it not only say that he forgiveth all your transgressions, said, Who healeth, healeth, healeth all thy tonight, healing is coming to you. To the time that Jesus lived here on earth, a leper came and said, if you're willing, you can make me whole. 
And then the Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, touched him, he became born. And he still does. As he was at that time, he's healing. The centurion came and said, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of the palsy. And Jesus said, I'll come and heal him. And the man said, I'm not worthy. I only came because I know you have compassion. I know you have mercy. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. And Jesus spoke the word. Servant was healed. And Jesus Christ, our healer, deliverer, redeemer, is still the same today. He will speak the word to that sickness, infirmity in your life. In Jesus' name. The Bible recalls that everyone that came, he healed them all. He healed them all. And he's coming to you today, no matter where you are, you are here or you are there in another country, anywhere you are, as the word comes to you, the healing power of the Lord will come with that word, you will hear you. Word of healing. I said miracle of healing as you believe. Lord, I believe it will happen in Jesus' name. I come to point number three now, and it's conversion through the cross of Christ for our humiliated substitute. The way we should have been humiliated, we are the people that should have died on the cross. We are the people that should have borne the punishment. He was sinless. He was spotless. He was righteous. He was holy. He was heavenly. But we are the people that are earthly. We are the people that are simple. We are the people that are guilty. We are the people that are condemned. And then he became our substitute. He took our place where we should have been. That's where he came. And where he was, that's where we're going. He tasted all the punishment for us. He tasted all the suffering for us. He tasted all the pain for us. That's why we call him our substitute. But then, not humiliated substitute. Did you see? Did you hear how they tied him to the to the pool and this and they kind of beat him with many stripes and there were sharp stones or sharp metal at the edge of those weaves and he tore his body, tore his flesh. That's why it says by his stripes were killed. And then he went to the cross, he carried the cross, he felt humiliated for you. Now tell me, if he has borne all that shame, if he has borne all that suffering, borne all that degradation, all the evil for you, as you come, I'll say, Lord, I recognize all that I but you suffered for me, and you bought that for my sake. Lord, I come. He will not reject you. He will take you. He will recreate you. He will transform your life, and then you'll be able to say, I've been to Christ. He forgave me. Not only that, I came to Christ. He came to Christ. He revived and rejuvenated my life, regenerated my life, and I'm not what I used to be anymore. He'll convert you. I said he'll convert you. He'll change your life. And the things you were doing before, he will take that nature that wants